So please welcome Lawrence Jordan and Jose Mara. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, how many people here consider themselves an editor? I wanted to talk about this project uh, tonight because it presented a lot of unique editorial challenges. Uh, I started working with Marlon and his, uh, and his crew uh, about four years ago uh, with his director, Mike Titus who actually started as a PA for Marlon and his producer and has now directed his fifth film for Marlon and his producer. So if anyone's a PA out there hoping to work their way up the ranks, uh, you know, the dream is real. You know, you can do it. And uh, Mike did it. He's been with those, those guys 16 years. I, I hooked up with him three years ago on a film uh, called Fifty Shades of Black. And um, it was a low-budget film. Uh, times were tough for me. Uh, the, the economy had gotten kind of crappy, and I, I was having trouble finding work, so I could re relate to what Trudy was saying, when I think all creative professionals go through at points in their career. But I took this low-budget tier one film, and I, I, I had the greatest time of my life. And I got along great with these guys, and I was really grateful uh, to hook up with people that um, that we had a lot of creative uh, you know, resonance, and um, they appreciated my work, and um, it, it just worked out. And so I've done three films with them, and, and it's a lot of fun, and, and, and I enjoy cutting comedy. But uh, getting back to Sex Tuplets, uh, it was crazy, because Marlon is crazy. <laughs> and the craziest thing about, well, let, let me show you the trailer. My whole life, I always wondered what my birth family was like. Open it. My mama had six babies at the same time. With sex tuplets. Maybe one of them changed their name to Idris Elba. You know, we do have strikingly similar bone structures. You're my brother, Russell. Come here, bro. This is awkward. Oh, shit. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! I decided to join you to fight our siblings. Good night, Alan. Ah! Hey, man, you make it. The buck is beautiful. Boy, if you don't put some damn clothes on. Look around. So, so you're a stripper? What the hell? A stripper and exotic dance are different. See this? Plie, relevé, ass on face. Please, don't, don't do that. Ah. Duck, duck, duck. Yeah, don't stop. Ethan? <laughs> You smell like money, huh? Like you got, you got Republican money, huh? Hey, hey, hey! You know I'm a Bernie bro. Oh, you shop at Whole Foods. I am free. I was about to El Chapo this bitch. Oh my God! It feels so housewives of Atlanta is this? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Baby Peter's in the hospital. Not every day that a long-lost family member appears at a thin air, donate a kidney. You said what? Why you gotta take my kidney? Why don't you take one of theirs? Don't look at me, because I sniffed way too much laptop cleaner, and I popped a molly yesterday. I want some molly. I just gotta find the rest of them. Good slide! I always wanted to do that. These past few days have been the greatest of my life. My dude. Since we hit the road together, I've done things I've only seen on television. Thank you, I, 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 I didn't cut the trailer, but, so Marlon plays seven roles in this movie, and you know, again, that, that presented a lot of, uh, you know, crazy challenges. One, it's improv comedy. Now, I don't know how many people, uh, you know, have, have dealt with those kinds of, of, of footage, 
But um, we had um, about 200 hours of dailies for a 90 minute film. So that was a unique challenge. I mean, I don't know what the ratio is. It's like, it's like 150 to one. Uh, you, you know, back in the day, if you got three takes from a director on an episodic television show, that was a lot of takes. So we would get, you know, 20 and 25 takes, and these takes would fill up the entire card. So they would be 33 minute takes. Yeah. And um, also, you know, Marlon played seven roles, so it was uh, visual effects uh, for a comedy, which, you know, Almost every movie these days is a visual effects movie in some sort of way, shape, or form. But this was really intense, and we had uh, we ended up having almost uh, a thousand visual effects shots. Which um, Jose was the VFX editor, and without him, I I definitely wouldn't have <laughs> survived on this thing. So um, we had a we had a great crew, and we started out really small because they always really want they always want to start you out really small and and as cheaply as possible. It was Jose. Sarah, this was down in Atlanta. We shot this in Atlanta for three months. We had Jenny, and our PA was a guy named Reed who did a great job and actually got to do quite a bit of um, work that if anyone's here from the union, he wasn't supposed to be doing, but uh, <laughs> sorry. The business is changing, and um, you know I like to give people opportunities if they want them, and I do, and uh, yeah, so. Okay, so there's Marlon. He's done Scary Movie, White Chicks. Uh, Fifty Shades of Black was the first one I worked on with them, and Naked. Now, um, not every, Marlon's not everybody's cup of tea, and I, and I get that. That's, that's fine. But having said that, this movie was streamed 46 million times the first weekend. So obviously, he's got a pretty good following somewhere. And uh, that's why they keep giving him, and thankfully me, money to make movies. Uh, this, this was a, like a, a 30, uh, uh, just under 30 million budget. Uh, the first one we did was under five, the second one was like 20, and this was, was 30. So it was really nice, working for Netflix is great. They're the eight million pound gorilla in the room of filmmaking these days. So if you get an opportunity to work with them, you're lucky, and I felt very lucky to do that. So, how did we deal with these 200 hours of film? Uh, you know, that, that's the big question. We did it three ways, and we did it in the Avid, but you can do it in, in Adobe Premiere and Final Cut, uh, you know, with keywords and comments. We did it with, with all these things, started out with markers, comments, and then we used Avid Script Sync. I don't know, anybody familiar with Avid Script Sync? Has anybody used it? Yeah, uh, it's a really cool program that I resisted uh, using for a long time. But again, with digital technology, we don't have any choice but to use these kinds of tools because you can't get through the material otherwise. Also, the Avid Search tool was really, really powerful. I'll show you that to you in a minute. Okay, so there's um, uh, a take from, from Marlon as his brother Russell. And if you look along the bottom, You'll see all these green and um, red dots. And this is a seven minute and 34 second take. So it's a relatively manageable take, right? Um, but here's a blow up of, of those markers. And what I have my crew do is mark in and out every time Marlon either resets or does another line. Because otherwise, I would never be able to find anything. This way, everything is commented, keyworded, and it's searchable. Um, there's no way to get through this movie. You know, I love people who say, I watch every frame of dailies. <laughs> well, if I was watching every frame of dailies, that's what I'd still be doing right now mm -hmm. because it would be impossible. So you have to be able to figure out a way to go through the material very quickly. And markers were one way. Those are the markers. I'm just working on this PowerPoint thing. Um, and, you know, these are the comments, okay? These are just the comments for that one take. There's like almost something like 100 comments and everything was done manually by Reed and Jenny. And uh, yeah, Reed and Jenny basically because we put Sarah on script sync as soon as possible. And essentially, Sarah transcribed every word of the movie so we could search and find everything. This is, this is Script Sync um, in the Avid, and 
you know, basically, you can click on a line. All the things that say AL on the side there to the left are ad-libs. Deserted the instant she got pregnant. Typical. <laughs> Nevertheless, deserted her. <laughs> okay, deserted her so the instant she got. Go pregnant. to the next take. Typical. Next take. Deserted her the minute she got pregnant. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> deserted her the minute she got pregnant. <laughs> right? Yeah. Deserted her the instant she got pregnant. <laughs> what a statistic. Okay, so that, that actually wasn't a different takes. Those are just different starts in the same take. So there, there were dozens and dozens of these things. So, you know, people wonder what, you know, what does an editor do? Does he just, or she just cut off the slates and, you know, slap the stuff together, wide shot yeah. with a close up. No, that's not what we do. What we do is we go through volumes and volumes of material, somewhat like, I guess, a documentary or even reality TV these days because, you know, there's just so much material. In fact, towards the end of the editor's cut, we put on another editor to cut one scene, which uh, actually it was three scenes numbered, but it was one scene in the movie as it's finished that I think the, the first cut on that scene was something like 40 minutes long. So thank you, Byron York, wherever you are. <laughs> um, these, uh, this is the search tool real quick, and I can put in the word baby, and this will give me everywhere the, baby, uh, the word baby is marked in the movie. So again, it's just, it's just hundreds of, of, of things. Now, uh, that, so, so, so just dealing with the volume of film was our biggest challenge. Then, of course, the visual effects. We've got this one guy playing seven different roles. Um, how do you do that? Well, you know, I'm sure you've seen all kinds of visual effects about blue screen and green screen. Again, um, motion control was our, our, our friend because Mike, the director, wanted to make it as dynamic as possible. He didn't want to make it as sort of static as films that had done this earlier, like uh, some of the Eddie Murphy movies and things like that. Um, blue screen and split blue screen, we did a lot of. Uh, compositing, rotoscoping, makeup fixes, and I'm sure Jose will fill us in on, on stuff that, uh, that we forgot. This is the Techno Dolly. Um, it's an amazing computer-controlled dolly that can repeat moves. So, uh, you know, actors do it one time, and then uh, they can be another actor, another character, and do it again. And uh, it's amazing technology. The stuff that's, that's out there is just, is just mind-blowing. I won't put you through the whole thing. Here's some blue screen, split screen. As you can see, we have a Spyro over there who was Marlon's double for the character of Russell. And um, that's what it looked like in the movie when we, when we ultimately finished it. Um, yeah, so it's a split and a blue screen. And the other thing is, and Jose, if you want to chime in on this, uh, there are so many other elements to just doing this shot. You resize the backgrounds, you resize the characters, you retime the characters. So it's not just, um, it's not just compositing and rotoscoping, it's, it's, it, it, it's doing so many more things in a single shot. I think this is a different big house than the one you imagine. So, you know, that's a pretty simple one. This is a, a shot that, that Jose came up with that the visual effects supervisor said we couldn't do, um, but the magic of Jose. Why don't you talk, talk us through this a little bit? Um, so one of the things that happened with this movie is, first of all, there's the organizational part of it, but there's also the storytelling part of it. Usually, if you have like eight cameras at the same time, they're capturing the same moment. But here, we have him doing different lines, which they have to be in sync. When you're moving the camera, if he's saying a joke, and if he's at the other, as the other character laughing too early or laughing too late, it just doesn't work. So what we did is we made group clips um, that were synchronized and then Larry could actually go and, and switch between them. That's fine, but how do you know, first of all, what character it is? We had a color coding system, you know, Don was pink, uh, Russell was green and all this kind of stuff. But we also had markers in there that set the line and who set it. So you can look in it and say, okay, well, if this is where the joke is and this is Don reacting, that's too early. 
So what Larry would do is he would find the performance of the lead character, which was usually Alan, and then put whatever other piece that he wanted. But there's always reaction things or other things that actually fill the frame that I had to go find. And one of the things that we were discussing today, Baby Pete was done with a body double that had the body structure of what they wanted him to look. And then we just had Marlon's head. But Marlon wasn't acting out, it was just his head. So Larry would go in and pick the performance, but I would go and find the arm that actually kind of goes and tells the story. And even just that arm at the beginning was like, it's just an arm. But then, you know, there is some nuances in there. Oh, no, I mean, nuances is, is an understatement. I mean, he would find things like a finger point or, you know, and, and these would be direct instructions from the director and myself. We'd say, hey, hey Jose, we need to find this finger point mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And this guy would go through all the material and find it. I but mean, even the other character's reaction, right? So you have four characters, and one is talking to the other one, but then they talk to this person. You gotta find the piece where like, they're all following. They just can't be like this, right? But to tell the story of what Larry was saying, I always like to challenge everything. And one of the things that I do is I'm also a compositor, a poor one, but you know, still. Not true. And so I, I actually come up with things and creative solutions to, to problems that, that happen, right? So in this particular take, he is finding his brother for the first time. I'm her son. This is a mistake. So again, this is the motion control camera. I'm her son. And it means we're brothers. The timing has to be right, because otherwise it'll look stupid. No, 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 look right there. You see that? See that? See that misprint? See that date there? That's my birthday. And see, that would only... Yeah, but that's my birthday. Yeah, but that would only make sense if, in fact, you and I were... <laughs> so that's the motion control, and here's... Russell! The Roto. We're twins! Come here, pal! This is our... Now that shot was never supposed to be in the movie because they cross over each other and that makes it a real pain in the ass. You know, I used just, you know, editing techniques, right? At the beginning, there was, the way it was supposed to be was just two close-ups. But who wants to see the first hug, the first time they touch each other, the first they interact? So we cut right before the shot falls apart. So the VFX supervisor said, oh no, they can't touch each other. I was like, okay, they're not touching each other. We're just going to here and then just... Good old editing. That's basically all we did here. Okay, so, you know, the point here is, is you know, not to be an asshole to your VFX supervisor. Okay? <laughs> Too I'm late. Not, Too I'm late. Not, I'm, Too but, late. But the point is, is that we want to tell the story in the best way possible. And we yeah. want to utilize all the stuff. It's like, hey, guys, you shot this. You know, it's like, don't tell me I can't use it. It's, yeah. That's ridiculous. It's like telling an editor, you know, cut yeah. it, do it with your eyes closed. So we try to use every element in any way possible, shape or form, and every once in a while we got some flack, but pretty much if it worked and the director liked it, it yeah, didn't matter, do it. It you know, exactly. it, was, it was done. So, yeah. so that was like some of the magic. This is another compositing wizardry. I mean, you see the, the dolly track over there on the left, the boom guy, and I had a, again, this just shows you how much you do with a frame. I mean, this frame was blown up, it was repoed, plates were put in the back. I, I don't know, how many elements were in something like this? They were like about eight or nine, but what's particular about this shot is that it was towards the end of the production, and think that a seven people shot takes seven days, because he's not changing makeup. It takes a whole day to put on so the makeup So we would be waiting around characters. and say, we can't cut the scene until next week, yeah. right? So but, I would just keep getting piled and piled on of dailies, and I'm yeah. like, what is going on here? I have no idea. Where are those people? You know? Yeah, yeah. But with this particular thing, they just started kind of going because the camera's not moving. So they just kept saying, 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 saying. Well, okay, now in the Avid, you have seven tracks of audio that I go out of sync, right? Like I basically just grab Larry and say, we're not going to use multiple layers. I'm going to kind of submaster it so you have one track, but everything is inside. But you slip it, and all of a sudden, all the renders go away, you can't do anything. So we would kind of mix down on top of that. And then this particular thing, they just started going. So it was like a 15 minute take, and you have to kind of listen to it with everyone's audio and find out, okay, well I can use this piece, but I cannot use that. And it's improv, improv yeah. comedy it was, it, on yeah. every track. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand? Do you see all those yeah. markers? So, I yeah. mean, you know, imagine that time seven, yeah. you know, it was insane. <laughs> I started drinking heavily. <laughs> started. It got me through. That's an editor trick and I recommend, no, I'm just kidding. I did not start drinking. I was drinking semi heavily. Yeah. But um, here's the comp. Here's the comp afterwards. 
you know, uh, got rid of the dolly track, obviously put the other characters in there. Um, here's a, a shot that comes before that with all seven characters that Marlon plays. Um, real quick. I know a lot of them. Moving shot. On this new iPad. Ain't that what's kind of like having a TV Baby, in your pocket? Baby, be careful. Now, you know this avocado in that nine month later. Is. <laughs> I knew it. I so, again, he goes through and he has to resize, you know, it's perspective, lenses, uh, you know, plates. Uh, often there would be shadows where you would match a, a, a part of a plate, and Jose would have to go in there and do his magic. And, um, y y I guess the point is, it wasn't just me and Jose. We had a huge team. It expanded when we came back to LA. Yeah. Um, you can't do this on your own. You can if you have your entire life or something like that. But you know, it takes collaboration. It takes working together. It takes people who know what they're doing. And you know, towards you know, pretty once we got back to LA, you know, yeah. we had Richard uh, came on as a first. He got bumped up to uh, VFX editor. And, which was always the intention, because he is a VFX editor. Um, and, and we really started working like a pretty well-oiled machine. Yeah, one of the things, it was um, the first time that I, had, that I worked with Larry, and one of the things that was really good is that, you know, he is obviously a geek, and he's always looking for, like, technology, mm -hmm. and, you know. And so he had a new script sync, and I almost kind of forced it on him and said, we're not going to be able to finish this, this movie. We went through different computer monitors because all of a sudden that script was like this. So he, you know, we bumped him up to 32-inch monitors. And that's the kind of stuff that's fun about this is how do we, like, jerry-rig the wheel? Because the habit is not necessarily designed to do this. And we use simple techniques, good old-fashioned locators, and the PA was listening and just, like, typing every single thing in there. So a lot of it was... I spent so much money on Amazon because of Jose. <laughs> no, but it's like you, you have to use, you know, I grew up in editing and I grew up as a, a assistant editor and, you know, I kind of moved into the VFX side. But you have this mentality of organization. You got to carry this movie for about nine, ten, almost a year. So you got to start on the right foot. And we discovered things along the way that then we had to rewind. You know, at first Larry said, oh, I only want to see Don. I only need the little, you know, because Don is the one that, like, outlives memos. But then it's like, oh, I kind of like this. So I kind of want to do it for everybody. And be like, ah! So we had to go back and, like, re-put all this stuff. It was fun and challenging, but that was the fun of it, to kind of break the system into doing it what you need to do. He, he, he was like a mad scientist, and he came up with these <laughs> solutions because I was literally, like, ready to hang myself. <laughs> I mean, for example, this is, this is one example of what he was talking about. You know, each character color-coded seven layers, um, you know, six yeah. layers, actually, because, ba well, Baby Pete's in there also. So um, it was the only way to kind of, you know, make sense of this thing and, and, and get it done. And thank God I was able to turn a lot of stuff over to him. Well, you can, I can just tell right there who, who's, whose character it is, because I know each character has its own color. Yeah, and the audio was the same thing. Yeah, so like that's Don talking in there, and that's also Russell in there, and you can see the audio waveforms. But if you start like moving it, you kind of throw yourself out of sync. So it was a bit of a, a weird. And that would click until it collapses back, collapses back in. Yeah. So that's how Larry, in a way, would cut. Right. And, you know, and then he, we wanted to dip, dip into it. And look, it wasn't all just locked to each other. A lot of the times it was good old fashioned split screen. And he can do this and could do that. But again, there's no time for him to pick every single performance of seven people. So he would get the dialogue ones. And then I would get the ones on the side that I'm like, oh, ho, ho, like the reactions. these kind of things, you know. And it was a challenge because sometimes it would be like, there's only this one, guys. If you want it, this is the only one. <clears throat> yeah, OK, so let me, let me just keep going here real quick. And then, oh, yeah. shite. Hmm. PowerPoint expert Larry Jordan. <laughs> okay, so so you saw this, and so this is this is you know like a giant. All oh, right. Russell, Russell, pay attention. I want to see everybody in there. Mr. This is the, like one there. of the last shots in the movie. It's got all the characters, including Baby Pete and the iPod. <laughs> This was shot over weeks, and I'll be quite honest with you. I didn't, I didn't know what the hell this was, <laughs> and I was like, he would figure it out, and I was just like, 
thank God for this crazy Argentinian dude who worked <laughs> next door to me. Well, you have to bring in ideas. Obviously, I would only talk to him at first, and they'd be like, that's great. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work, and that's the fun. It's, it's like the, the, I had so much other stuff to worry about. I didn't even want to worry about that. Yeah, it was shot. just like, you, you do know, it without one like, shot. Dude, take this over. And then there were things like, I don't know, how many makeup fixes were there? I don't know, like 600. There were like, know, yeah, there were incredible. hundreds of makeup fixes. I mean, look at this, the prosthetics on, on, on her but, face. But one, ha one company will be doing the makeup fix. The other company will be doing the window in the back. And so like, you have to kind of figure out who was doing what. And if one company's behind and the other one is going, I need the makeup fix. I can't find another shot. So when you have multiple vendors per shot, it becomes even crazier. So, I, I, I mean, you know, we're kind of like giving you 11 months worth of work in, in 25, 30 minutes, and uh, there's so much more to it, but, but we just wanted to kind of give you an overview. So the conclusions are, come up with a plan. <laughs> or make it up as you go. Which or is quit. <laughs> uh, and, and thankfully, you know, between this guy and, and myself, we were able to come up with a plan. A lot of different little plans to solve yeah. the editorial challenges that we had. Yeah. Focus on organization in terms of just dealing with the volume of material. Uh, divide the tasks up. Everybody had a specific task. Yeah. Uh, our second, uh, Sarah down in Atlanta, only did script sync. Yeah. Um, and she drank heavily also. Because <laughs> no. Her husband made beer, so. She, yeah. <laughs> she was really good at it, and she did a great job. And when I had a problem with it, she fixed it. And, uh, you know, Jenny did the commenting, although she did dailies also. But uh, yeah. Mark comment, keyword, and script sync. And for people who are aspiring editors and assistant editors, acquire VFX skills. They're a critical part of almost every movie, even dialogue movies now. You know, you see... Uh, you know, backgrounds replaced, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, acquire these skills, uh, learn how to use the software. It doesn't matter what it is, Premiere, Final Cut, Avid, you know, obviously Avid's pretty predominant in, in features in television, but, uh, it, you know, it, it, Premiere's coming up and, and Final Cut has its adherence also. It makes you make a difference in a way because a lot of the times I work with editors that like don't necessarily understand visual effects or don't know what's possible. So if you at least know how to kind of just jerry-rig something, you can bring in ideas that are like, you know, just like the hug thing. You know, there's a difference. You know, they say as an editor, you show it. You don't necessarily say it. So I was able to kind of do it and then show Larry, and then he would say, this is going to work, and pitch it. So a lot of the times, it kind of sets you apart from the rest of the assistants because you can bring in something that then the editor and we can brag about and say, look at what we did here. This was something that came out of the cutting room and not something that we were told to do. Well put, well put. And um, by the way, to learn even more about this stuff, I have to mention that there's this course called Master <laughs> Workflow. Yeah, baby. Uh, and uh, we, uh, my former assistant Richard Sanchez and I created it, and we train uh, people to become assistant editors and eventually editors. It's very comprehensive. It's like 14 hours worth of material. Uh, we dive deep into uh, maybe not specifically as, as much, uh, you know, this, uh, this effects workflow, but we do cover, you know, how an assistant deals with effects and things like that. On that note, we have to move along. Thanks, Jose Mara and Lawrence Jordan. <laughs> <laughs>